promise that MCC makes to its students is to help prepare you for a global context. We all recognize that the world that we all enter into today, but especially you, is very, very different from the one that MCC saw 50 years ago. Certainly we are, I guess I would say PI, post-internet, uh, but we are also post very many things. And when Louis Andolino walked through MCC's door 50 years ago, it was a very different world, but he wanted to explore it. He was one of the members of our very first graduating classes, and coming to MCC sparked a lifelong interest in political science and international relations. He was able to share this passion during more than a 30-year career as a professor at the Rochester Institute of Technology. And today, as many of you know, he shares his love of teaching and his keen awareness and understanding of the world around us as an associate professor of political science at MCC. Professor Andolino also inspires his students and his colleagues as an advisor for MCC's highly, selective, highly successful and selective, honestly, Model United Nations program and as a member of MCC's Internationalization Task Force. I should also note that he is a member of MCC's Alumni Hall of Fame. As a member of MCC's first graduating class, Professor Andolino, along with his fellow alumni, have been a tremendous source of advocacy for the college and a tremendous source of pride during our 50th anniversary year. The students in our first class are truly regarded as pioneers, beginning classes in what was then the condemned East High School on Alexander. Those of you who attend MCC today may realize we've come a bit ways from that. They believed in the promise of public higher education as we do so much, and they are among our most loyal advocates and supporters. Many of you who took a class with Professor Andolino may not realize that he literally sat where you are today. So I encourage you to please provide a warm, warm welcome for your commencement speaker, Professor Louis Andolino. Dr. Kress, uh, thank you for your generous introduction, very generous introduction. As a member of the first class at Monroe Community College and as a member of its faculty, I am honored to speak here today at this joyous and memorable occasion and celebration of achievement. Dr. Kress, MCC administrators, members of the Board of Trustees, special guests on the platform, faculty colleagues and MCC staff, classmates from MCC's first class, special family and friends of our graduates, and my fellow Monroe Community College graduates. Over 50 years ago, if you were to ask my old Rochester neighborhood friends if they could imagine me as a commencement speech the speaker at a college, the reaction doubtless would be something like, who? Uh, Lou Andolino? Uh, that guy from the Central Park and Goodman Street area? Uh, Lou, the one who lived near the city public market and spent most of his time at the First Street Playground and Astor Movie Theater? Seriously? Forget about it. Okay. Of course, there may have been some justification for this cynical view. There were many, myself included, who did not see college or professional prospects in my future. I had a variety of post-high school jobs, but more importantly, I had no sense of focus or direction in my life. Sound familiar? Then one day, one of my buddies, uh, Danny Ladoch, uh, was in a similar unproductive life situation, told me about the startup of a new college in Rochester. We checked it out, we applied, and soon I was to receive this letter. 
this letter informing me of my admissions to the first freshman class at Monroe Community College. This letter, and why did I keep it after all these years? This letter further stated that the opening of our new college would be an exciting period for all of us, students, faculty, and staff. The letter was signed by Donald Smith, Director of Admissions. And indeed, it was an exciting period, a great educational experience that changed my life forever. Among other things, I met my wife, Marilyn, a life partner and best friend. Thank you, MCC. Lifelong friendships were established with my classmates, many of whom continue their ties to MCC. There are some of them in, the, in this section, 105, right over here. Uh, in fact, the very first student who signed up for that founding class is here today, Tony Ventura. Where is he? Give us a wave, stand up. There he is. The very first student, student number one, Monroe Community College. Still look pretty good, Tony. Of course, MCC provided me with academic skills, and, and just as importantly, the personal confidence to move on to other educational institutions, on to graduate school at Kent State University, and an interesting and highly satisfying career in higher education. Thank you, MCC. It was apparent from the college's beginning that it was unique in terms of its objectives of providing students with the opportunity to get a college education, an opportunity for people like me and for many of you, I'm sure. This early experiment, based on a great collaboration of faculty, administration, staff, and appreciative and energized students, was successful and laid the foundation of MCC today. But this early achievement had to overcome a few obstacles, not the least of which was to have a college in an old facility at 410 Alexander Street, which was the former East High School. This building was not a college in any sense of the word, except for the teaching and academic work that went on inside its walls. The first three floors consisted of offices, classrooms, labs, and the library, but much of the activity was in and around the cafeteria, which was located in the basement. The basement. Okay. Oh, and then there was also a bookstore, no larger than a closet, uh, in the basement. All this didn't matter because it was our college. It was our college, and learning was going on there. Did you know that the first class wrote the first student constitution and established the first student government? Named and started the first student newspaper, the Monroe Doctrine. A student named Judy Lee designed the logo, still used by MCC. She received an award of $25 for her creative efforts. And get this, uh, in that first year we even had a student code of conduct. The infamous code included such things as Students will not be permitted to smoke in lecture rooms, science labs, the library, auditorium, and halls, and resting legs and feet on the furniture, that is, chairs, tables, and walls, is forbidden. Out of the approximately 720 uh, 20 founding students at MCC, 83 would graduate in 1964. And like your class today, members of that first class would go on to be educators, engineers, members of the armed forces, business persons, executive engineers, and professions of all uh, in all occupations. And like you today, those initial students would be thrust into a tumultuous and complex world. In the 1960s, college students were challenged by the assassinations of President John F. Kennedy, his brother Senator Kennedy, and Martin Luther King, as well as life-changing events like the Vietnam War and social movements like 
civil rights in the women's movement. Every graduating class, including yours, will have its own set of challenges. In looking back to the beginning years at MCC, I am struck by what is the same today about this college. For example, the objective of providing students with the opportunity to achieve a college education along with the commitment to academic quality and excellence is still the very foundation of this institution. And this is illustrated on a daily basis as one observes the dedication and professional efforts of MCC's exceptional faculty and staff. Their hard work and absolute focus on helping all students be the best they can be and prepare them for a rewarding future continues to fulfill the essential mission of MCC. And in over 40 years in higher education, I have never seen such obvious faculty and staff commitment to the well-being and success of its students. But you know that, or you should know that. And isn't it interesting that well over 100 of our faculty and staff are graduates of MCC? And in so many ways, you are graduating from an exceptional center for learning, academic achievement, and personal growth. MCC is a vibrant and dynamic college, as illustrated by the changes that have occurred from those first few years. Uh, for example, the MCC Brighton campus is a state-of-the-art educational facility, beautiful and ever-improving. By all accounts, the direction of the college is to replicate this uh, with the addition of a new and improved city campus in Rochester. Also consider the dynamic programming and curriculum development over the years, in addition to an array of wonderful co-curricular activities that are provided for its students. MCC has robust, top-notch, and diverse academic uh, certificate and degree programs that range from nursing to engineering to business to diversity and community studies. <laughs> From that experiment on Alexander Street, MCC now is ranked, as Dr. Good has noted, as one of the best, one of the damn best community colleges in the country. And as I reflect on these 50 years of MCC history, I'm struck by the real meaning of community in Monroe Community College. For example, how many of you remember, or how many times do you think you've walked by those old plaques on, those, uh, on the wall in Building One at Brighton? Old plaques, a list of names in antiquity that no one really pays attention to. The reason that you and me are here is because over 50 years ago, the individuals memorialized on those plaques determined for practical and idealistic reasons to establish a community college in Rochester. All were professional, civic-minded individuals who were devoted to the well-being and future of the Rochester area. They were engaged in community responsibility, all successful in their own professions, they believed in the responsibility of community involvement. They understood the idea of community, and they gave something back. All role models for the importance of community spirit and progress that we could all learn from. This exceptional group also included someone who continues to be very special to MCC, Dr. Ellis Holloway Young. At the time of MCC's creation, Dr. Young was a pioneer of Rochester Public Education and a founding trustee of the college. She continues to grace us with her presence and her unwavering support for MCC, the college she helped found. 
And on behalf of the thousands of students who've studied and graduated from MCC, including our graduates today, I would like to recognize and thank Dr. Ellis Holloway Young. The concept of community is very real today at MCC as the college commits to the education and assistance to, uh, assistance to an expanded and culturally diverse student body. One such group is the growing number of international students who greatly enrich our campus. This is also an illustration of the dynamics of the changing, more intercultural world of globalization to reflect the reality of globalization and the changing nature of community. MCC, as President Kress alluded to, has embarked on an internationalization initiative that will help develop globally competent students for the future. All commencement speakers, all commencement speakers are expected to impart their great wisdom to the new college graduates. Well, okay. But first let me dispense with the obvious, mostly cliched points by, made by many in the commencement speaker business. Okay, first, for example, in life, when you get knocked down, make sure that you get right back up. Yes, you do that, okay? Here's another. Your challenge is to change the world. Yes, of course. But you have no choice. Remember that the challenges of the changing world of fast-paced technology, globalization, and a myriad of economic and social challenges will be forced on you. Your address, how you address these issues, will be the measure of your life. My late wonderful friend, Pat Doherty, she was a writer, a journalist, and a women's rights activist, loved to share this quote. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. And perhaps you could start by changing the space around you. And do not fear to think outside of the box and challenge the conventional wisdom and popular positions of the day. Then there's this. Work hard. Work hard. Do I really have to tell this graduating class that they have to work hard when I, as one of your professors, know that most of you are employed while attending college and working hard to get your education. Do I have to tell you that? You already know about hard work. I see you out there. I see you out there all over the community. I know that you're working, and I know that you're working at all forms of jobs while you are attending to your college education. Rather, I would focus on something else about work. I would focus on doing your best at whatever you do. Do your best. For example, for many of you that are going on to four-year schools, make your four-year schools better by your presence there. And for all of you, strive to be the best in whatever profession you choose, whatever it is. And let me leave you with my wish for this class. What I do wish for all of you is to move, uh, as you move to the next exciting stage of your lives. First, be a lifelong learner. Be intellectually curious and continue to develop the capacity for critical thinking. These three things are absolutely essential 
to an informed citizenry in maintaining a democracy. A democracy has to be worked at. We need an informed citizenry. Uh, and also, these three features. Thank you. <laughs> you need to be intellectually curious, a lifelong learner, and continue to develop the capacity for critical thinking because you need to have this capacity to operate effectively in a global system. Both your society here in America and the global community will have a great effect on you very directly. Be ready for it. You do live, you do live in a world of tremendous access to information. However, information alone without context and analysis is not sufficient. Consider the words of American biologist E.O. Wilson, who wrote, we are drowning in information while starving for wisdom. The world henceforth will be run by synthesizers, people able to put together the right information at the right time, think critically about it, and make important choices wisely. Number two, embrace diversity. Be sensitive to others and work for a better society. Get involved and do good things. This makes for a happy life. And this is basic, isn't it? It's really quite basic. Third, maintain a balance in your life. I have always thought that the purpose of a good education was to earn a living and living a life. My hope is that you believe that MCC provided you with such an education. The balance between these two, working hard, doing well in your professional pursuits, and at the same time enjoying life, enjoying the arts, enjoying your family, enjoying your friends, is so important. That balance is essential to happiness in my view, and the enjoyment of the gifts that life provides. And always think first of your family and your friends. One other point. <laughs> Have heroes. Have heroes. Those people that work and try to make the world a better place to live in. Admire these people. And they could be anyone. They could be your parent, your brother, your sister, your friend, your teacher. Someone that is doing something in transforming the world we live in doesn't have to be an international figure or even a national figure. It could be somebody living in your own house. But be inspired by who they are and what they do. Learn from them. And be a hero yourself. Lastly, I don't know if that's good or bad, but lastly, always remember Monroe Community College. Have a good life, and congratulations to the 2012 class. <laughs>